At this point, we have studied the structures of different kinds of biomolecules. In this case, we have seen the family of carbohydrates, lipids, amino acids, and nucleic acids and their functions. In this chapter, we look at metabolism. We use the food stuff that will provide molecules of ATP, extracting energy, or that can produce the different kind of biomolecules that will produce macromolecules such as glycogen from carbohydrates, membranes by the use of lipids, amino acids that are, can be used to make proteins, and nucleic acids to make DNA and RNA. Metabolism can be defined as a set of chemical reactions taking place in the cell. It can also be divided into two different kinds, and those are catabolism and anabolism. The word catabolism means extraction of energy as ATP molecule, and that is the currency of the cell. Anabolism can be defined as the use of ATP molecules to build large molecules from smaller ones. For example, the synthesis of a protein by use of amino acids is anabolism. The synthesis of DNA or replication, that is also anabolism. For catabolism, we can say that all carbons that enter our body will be oxidized to carbon dioxide and oxygen will be reduced to molecules of water. In order to oxidize fuels to carbon dioxide and water and at the same time to extract molecules of ATP, some ATP molecules must be used. Some reactions that are energonic will require the use of enzymes, coenzymes, and cofactors and ATP molecules. Those ATP molecules, when they get hydrolyzed, will transform reactions that are endergonic into exergonic reactions. Some coenzymes as NAD+, FAD, and FMN, and NADP+, are electron carriers. They will be taking two electrons, each two electrons, and producing the reduced form that can later transfer those electrons into the oxidative phosphorylation where ATP can be synthesized. Any catabolic process begins with a supply of nutrients. During digestion, all macromolecules will get hydrolyzed to the components. Proteins will provide amino acids, carbohydrates will provide glucoses, and triglycerides will provide glycerol units and fatty acids. All these different kinds of substances can form a three-carbon unit molecule named pyruvate. Pyruvate will undergo an oxidative decarboxylation producing a two carbon units molecule bound to a coenzyme A. This substance is the link between the citric acid cycle and many other different processes. This is a brief description of the catabolism of glucose. It is intended for survey of chemistry and not all transformations, enzymes, structures, or steps will be discussed. We typically ingest large amounts of starch and smaller amount of glycogen as part of proteins. Complex carbohydrates must be converted to simple ones. In this matter, amylase in the mouth and in the pancreas will hydrolyze alpha 1,4 glycosidic bond. Maltase will hydrolyze maltose and lactase will also release glucose and fructose units. Glucose enters the cell through a specific integral transport protein. 
once he enters the cells, he gets phosphorylated on carbon number 6 by hexokinase at expenses of ATP molecules. Once glucose gets a phosphoryl group on carbon number 6, it must isomerize to fructose 6-phosphate. The difference is that an aldose, we have an aldehyde group in here, has become a ketose with a phosphoryl group on carbon number 6. This is a reversible reaction. So glucose 6-phosphate has become fructose 6-phosphate. After the formation of fructose 6-phosphate, a second phosphorylation will take place in carbon number 1 and 6 of fructose. At this point, no ATP molecules has been produced but rather have been used. We have two phosphorylations on carbon number 1 and 6 and this molecule now, fructose 1,6-biphosphate, is suitable for cleavage. This splitting of these six carbon units will produce two three carbon units molecules, dehydroxyacetone phosphate and glyceraldehyde three phosphate. This unit, glyceraldehyde phosphate, is in the way to production of pyruvate and ATP molecules. Dehydroxyacetone phosphate is not but it can also produce ATP molecules by isomerization. So one isomerase enzyme will transform dehydroxyacetone phosphate into glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate. On the first stage of glycolysis, glucose got two phosphorylations at expenses of molecules of ATP by the use of kinases, one isomerization to transform glucose 6-phosphate into fructose 6-phosphate and the splitting of a 6-carbon unit into two 3-carbon unit molecules. The hydroxyacetone phosphate isomerizes to glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate to produce the molecule of pyruvate. Now this is a stage of harvest where molecules of ATP and Electrons are being extracted from carbon molecules. When we look at the overall of the reaction, we say that two molecules of pyruvate has been formed because this event is taking place twice as dehydroxyacetone 3-phosphate becomes glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate. The reduced coenzyme NADH is as important as the molecule of ATP because these reduced coenzymes will provide electrons that are necessary for the synthesis of a much larger number of molecules of ATP during oxidative phosphorylation. Also, it's important to look at the number of ATP molecules formed is balanced by those that were used in the initial state. In the presence of molecules of oxygen, the end product of glycolysis, molecule of pyruvate, can get further get oxidized to form carbon dioxide and water. This molecule can also be reduced to form the molecule of lactate. The carbonyl of pyruvate will get reduced to an alcohol group. This substance also can undergo a decarboxylation losing one carbon to produce the molecule of ethanol, a process called fermentation. In the presence of molecular oxygen or aerobic conditions, pyruvate can undergo an oxidative decarboxylation to react with the molecule of coenzyme A to produce acetylcoenzyme A. This is the link between glycolysis pathway and the citric acid cycle. Two carbons from acetylcoenzyme A will enter the citric acid cycle and will exit as carbon dioxide. These molecules of acetylcoenzyme A 
will also funnel electrons as reduced coenzyme NADH and FADH2. Reduced coenzymes will be important in the creation of a proton gradient that will facilitate the change in conformation of the enzyme in charge of ATP synthesis.